This video will show you a little bit about follow spotlight operation in the Palace Theater in downtown Columbus, Ohio. It features Mr. Rich Horton, a member of Stagehands Local 12 for over 50 years and former owner and operator of Bright Lights Sound and Lighting Company. Good morning. I'm Rich Horton. I started running these follow spots when I was in high school long years ago. This particular light in here is a strong super trooper and they were built in Toledo, Ohio. And it is basically a long throw follow spot designed to eliminate actors or groups of people on the stage depending on the requirements. It can go um, from basically a head spot clear up through a uh, full stage wash with vertical and horizontal or with horizontal uh, shutters to keep it off of the stage front and the proscenium. It has three basic operating controls up here. The back control controls your light on and off. It's a dowser and it can be set for various intensity levels. The front control is your iris in here, controls the size of it from a head spot up to a full body shot. And this control is generally a horizontal dowser. If you wish to go beyond full body shot, then the trombone down here in front comes back. It's pulled back slightly, which will make your beam go bigger in there, or you can go forward. The knob down here with the knurl on here is your focus control. Gives you a sharp edge on your light or dull edge depending on what you want or what the uh, show requires. You have a vertical lock in here which will lock your lamp in here so it does not move in here. This one is the horizontal lock. These two controls are not used very often. The vertical lock is set so that the light does not, when you let go of it, it does not move. And yet you still have easy movement with the hand control up here in front. How you run the light is your personal choice. Everybody has the way they like to do it and are comfortable with it in here. Uh, I have been doing this for so long in here, I tend to grab up here in front and this hand is always back here on the control waiting to open or close or to change the size of the light as needed in here while you are light or while you are moving the light across in here so it's a, this is a needs to be a blind operation you need to do it by feel and you you'll see on the stage the light in here change in here and that's what you do you don't look back at it you stay at the stage because if you, if you look back at it the person you are picking up may walk right out of your light make you feel really stupid <laughs> <laughs> so you keep your eyes on the stage, keep one hand on the forward control so that you can pan and tilt as necessary. This one takes care of getting you the right size and light on and off in there. The color boom in front has six colors in it, capability. If no colors inserted, then you will get a clear white or no colored beam in here. These will lock down. And if you have color frames in these with weight on them, when the next one you try in here, it will, well, this worked, it will release the previous one. With a little manual dexterity, you can do two at a time and mix colors together in here. And then when you down, next time it may lock up on you, but you gotta press down to release the previous ones in there. Color frames go in the front in here. They go in this area right here on and they slide onto the tracks of each each of these handles in here. And you have to make sure that they're seated properly. There is a stopper on it so that it will only go so far. If we put this in here, there we go. It goes in there like that. And when you change colors, this will, you push it down far enough, it will release it in there. If you, when you don't, you can gang them, gang two together. Then to clear the whole thing, you 
the knob. Count your frames and put your, if you're in frame one, put your hand on frame three, your finger on frame three, guide your lamp with the other hand so that when they say go on color, color change three, you, you go and you don't lag behind. If you're, if you're working a road show in here, they're going to give you a stack of colors in the, each frame, each color frame. We'll have a number written on it in here. That this particular like case, it's a 206. Okay. It's a color correction in here. I don't know. A it must be a quarter. I'm not sure what that... Would that be a color one of four? Could be. That would go probably go into frame one. It's a possibility. That's where, where is frame one? Frame one is always down toward the stage. And you count back, you count back to you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Always going that way. Why don't we talk about the intercom for a minute? Okay. Well, this is your this is your lifeline. <laughs> this is where your cues come from through the intercom system and your headset in here. Normally, you you will only be able to hear out of this headset in here because you don't want our everybody talking on the line. Only the stage manager is talking on the line. If somebody asks you a question specifically, you can do that by pressing the talk button and then releasing it so that your mic turns back off. If you have a question in here for, and need an answer for something, you can punch the call button, which will light up a light over here on all the packs, and hopefully your stage manager or somebody will answer you in that. Generally, my word is, don't call. Listen. You learn to listen. Most generally, your stage managers will repeat the cue at least once in here. If you get it the first time, you'll get it the second time. So if you have uh, three or four spots in the booth, mm -hmm. how do you know when it's your turn? They will call the follow spots out by your number. Spot three, color one, go. Uh, How does the operator learn what number he is? It will generally either be written on the lamp in a tape or someplace, or they will be assigned ahead of time, and you'll, from the position, you'll just have to figure that out once you get to the show. And maybe if the operator uh, asks before he comes up, or once he's on the headphones, he can ask what his number is. To be he sure. can, if that's, that's correct in here. Sometimes it's one to three, left to right. Sometimes they turn it around yes. the other way. A lot of the houses will have a number on the light already. They'll have them pre-numbered in here, in here. But if it's not, that number not, corresponds with the show, you're good. If it's uh, reversed from the show, the put, operator needs to know that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, where do the cue callers uh, usually position themselves uh, who travel with the show, who give the cue? Uh, sometimes they are out in front. Sometimes they are in the booth with you. Uh, rarely are they backstage because they need to see the action. So is it true that if they're with you in the booth or somewhere in the house, they'll probably use house direction, house right, house left, which is different than stage directions. But sometimes you have to take cues with stage directions and not house directions. That is correct. You have to keep your wits about you. It's not a hard job, but it does require you to be vigilant. You have to listen. You have to record in your mind what that cue is, what it's going to be, and listen for your go in here. You sometimes have to remember a color change at the same time. Rather, sometimes it's just a black it out in there. Sometimes it's a fade out. It's all done by intercom system, and you will be told what to do in here and how to do it, basically. Some of these power supplies have the breakers right on them. Yep. This one, uh, we have to go to the wall panel to power up. <coughs> See the strong name there? Very prolific name in the power spot. Uh, now our power supply is coming on. Here are the fans. Okay. Turn your lamp mode on. You turn or manual manual control. 
fan came on in the lamp. And we have a lamp ignition. You can see here. You can see the light coming out of the housing. Mm -hmm. Right there, up here, it tells us that the light is on. So let's say that you're going to get a lighting cue over the headphones. And they tell you to stand by frame one, center stage. What's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to put your frame in. Let's go to uh, one down. You've got your right hand uh, ready to swing the light. And the left hand is up on the dowser. Mm -hmm. And you're waiting for the go. And here comes the go and go. The dowser is open. Yeah. The lamp is moved to the center stage. There we go. I feel here. Oh boy, that mirror is way out. So let's say that the uh, we have a singer here, and the singer moves to the right. And so the light moves, to, the, follows the action, moving to the right. Are you talking about stage direction to boot direction? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, we have to watch the action. You might yeah. get some wrong directions. And sometimes the cue call <coughs> is mixed up. We have That's to true. The so the cue caller now says uh, standby frames uh, four and five together. And uh, on a count of three and go. So that was a fast count of three. <laughs> That's okay. Well, you can't change these in that speed or not. Okay. Well, sometimes they ask for that. The next cue is the standby. Uh, let's go to white. And so now the Operator simply puts his thumb on the release lever and go. And there we are. So if they ask you to strip out, that means that we are going to open up our light pretty wide, probably with the trombone handle as well as the open iris, which is up mm. at the top. And then the strip out means we close down the lighting pattern on the top of the bar. And they only got it taped down. And that's done with the shutters. In this case, uh, that's taped off because they're rarely used. Mm -hmm. But you get a cue to strip out the stage, that would be the procedure. And no doubt they'll stay stand by to restore, and they want a real smooth restoration back to a tight spot, in which case you have to. Open the shutters, close the iris, and push the trombone handle forward in one smooth operation. Say stand by for a blackout and the restore in white. So, and go, and you black out with the dowser, you clear your color, and go. And you come back then uh, on the action, same as you were before, with, a, with no color. Sometimes they'll say to stand by to black out. And you'll see the stage lights go out, and you think, I should go out too, and so you do, but you're mistaken. The blackout cue oftentimes will follow stage blackout. Mm -hmm. And then they'll ask you to restore, and you'll actually come back <coughs> on before the stage lights do. This light needs a little touch up, and the mirrors are out of whack. We'll start at center in here, in here. And we can go downstage where I am now going to upstage and we can come over here and be up left down left you have to be vigilant in that you are looking at the stage from the booth and the stage directions are given from the stage so they're backwards up here so if somebody says stage left in here it's actually over here on this side. They say stage right in here, they're, you're coming in from over here. And you have to remember that because it make you look stupid <laughs> you know, if you're on the wrong side of the stage. This is a basic round beam. The light needs a little attention in here, but you can see with the trombone all the way forward, we're going from a basically a people sized spot in here and we can then go on down, down to 
about the size of that your couple of shoes down there. Like a head and shoulder shot? Yeah, then, then a head, you can get, you can get a head and shoulder shot in there like that, in here. Thereabouts, in here. Going the other way, with this particular lamp in here, you have the capability of opening up. As you can see, the focus is not has not is not correct for for going all the way open. But we can flood wider open in here on the and the thing, and then we can actually oh, that's as that's as wide as we can get it. So why don't we talk about Q caller wanting you to pick up a shop in the house? Well, you are pretty much limited in this theater shot in the house. You might want to pick up somebody down here at the stairway so that you're not completely all over the wall and then you come up. You get what some, about the conductor? The conductor will probably be down and possibly in the center of the pit down here and will be over in this area in, 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 down in some place down in here. Open up. Yeah, and you won't want to get off the. You won't want to be on the audience. This 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 one is hard to do. What's you, the ballyhoo look like? Ballyhoo is backwards and forwards across the stage. And what about a figure eight ballyhoo? There you go. Try to do it with the music if we can. Yes, and and with size. So what is this thing called? Well, it's a Telrad, is it not? Yeah, I believe it's Telrad. What do the kids, uh, the operators, typically call them? Mm, scope, something. It's scope. Yeah. Turn a little bit on this over there. Yeah. This way. Yeah. Now, how does that attach to to the spotlight? It has a magnetic base on it in there, the removable magnetic base that will zap right onto the steel cover of uh, most yep. any follow spot. Put it on. So this is used to find your object on stage before you open your light. Yeah, but it requires a little bit of uh, work beforehand. You need to take your follow spot, bring it down into a very small spot and on the stage, and then center that image in the viewpoint of the finder up here with the controls on the back. You can move the mirrors around in it so that it sets up in this, your spotlight circle sets up in the middle of that target. This is that, done before the show starts. That is absolutely correct. Do not do it when you have an audience in the house or during the show. I set my scope down to the center stage down here, microphone position center stage generally. And every time you open your light, it's going to be exactly where you want it to be every time. So uh, some operators own, have their own because they're yeah. never sure that the theater they're going into uh, that's correct. will have these. Greatest invention since Swiss cheese for the follow spot <laughs> operator. <laughs> okay, now how's the batteries changed? We always have to worry about the batteries being out. Uh, maybe you can show us, Bill, what the procedure is for checking the batteries. We just covered the slides open on the top. A battery holder in there, a couple of double A cells. Yep. That's all it is. Good for the operator to bring some batteries with them just in case they're needed for their scope. Typically batteries will last a really long time. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Turn it off when you're done. Turn yeah. it off when we're done. That makes yeah. the batteries last a long time. Mm -hmm. Show's over uh, and your spots are not needed. You have to come over and your shutters will be closed up on the front in here. You normally bring the, turn the lamp off in here. The fan will continue to run in here until the lamp cools down in here, or you shut the mode off in here. In this case, we're running in manual mode in here. So this is the 
this light's not going to turn off until we power down at the panel. Yeah. What's the cool down time? Five minutes in there. They cool down pretty quickly. And we also have to make sure that the uh, dowser is closed. Yes. And not walk away from an open light. All right, if you have two lights on the same person or individual, unless you are told differently, you both must be the same size. So you have to match. One has to lead and the other one has to match it in here. And normally it's going to be probably top of the head, typical spot to down to the knees maybe on a Broadway in here. And uh, on most Broadway shows, you're probably going to have a diffusion media in your light. So you're not going to have a hard edge across the knees, be a soft edge. Uh, that diffusion the, media is another color frame, right? It is in another color frame in here, and it's generally, you'll be use it in conjunction with another color. You could have frames one with diffusion, frame six with a color in it. Okay. One and six. The idea is to take a hard edge off of the light. Pattern. That is correct. Okay. Make kind of light just kind of disappears into nowhere. So if you're not told the size of the pickup, what should you do? Uh, size of the person size if, you, if head, you, to toe? You, head to toe or a little bit more than that arm wise in here so you they don't do this to you and have you come out of your light what do you do when the guy wants a head and shoulders shot but the person is a dancer and they're all over the place you're in trouble <laughs> it's very difficult just have to open up and follow don't you? you do and and the more times you see the show uh, the better you're going to be at it because you'll learn what that dancer is going to do. And you can learn to anticipate a little bit of where they're going to go and what they're going to do. Now if you have two people who are center stage and then they divide off, and you have two lamps, what's the best way to handle that if you don't have any direction over the headphone? Probably take the person on, the su on your side of the stage. If you've got a guy and a gal down there, a lot of times they'll tell you spot one got the guy, spot two's got the gal and you just stick with them. And then they come together and stay together for a while. Mm -hmm. What should the lamps do at that point? I'm thinking uh, they need to open up a little bit so both lamps are co covering both people uniformly. That, that's correct. And it's what I call grouping. You know, both lights are on top, focused, the edges of the focused, one on top of the other, so it looks like one light. And that's hard to do if they start moving on you. Because there's no way you're going to stay with them, keep that together. But you do the best you can. So the minute they stop moving and become static, you immediately are on top of one another with the uh, edges of the light. I'm just trying to think if we're doing a rock and roll show, we got a band, <clears throat> a really crowded stage of musicians and equipment, and sometimes you can't always see who they're talking about from the booth. And they'll give you a cue called to open up or to go. Mm -hmm. My experience is open up on whoever you think they want better than not opening at all. Um, quite possibly okay, yeah. And th then they will tell you that you're on the wrong person and, and where to move. To. Yes. It's, it's whoever the, is giving you the cues, it is their responsibility to tell you whom you're supposed to be on. And sometimes if their people are all in the same costume, or it may be difficult. It may be some down tell you, take the short person or the really tall person. Uh, there's some other identification on it so that you're on the right person at the right time. So how do we handle the closing curtain? Stay off the curtain. <laughs> so as the curtain comes together, you fade out your light. You fade out before you, you should be faded out so that the curtain, the edge of your light never touches the lead edge of the curtain. And you would probably do that even without a cue from the cue caller. That is correct. Advice for spot operators. Keep your eyes open. They'll move out of your light the very first opportunity comes along if you don't you're going to be look like a goofy fool. <laughs> Believe me, it, it happens to all of us at some time or other during life. 
unusual spotlight uh, locations, not in the theater. I'm thinking of having to go up on a scissors lift. Mm -hmm. You may need to be prepared for that. Uh, you're going to be working outdoors. You need to bring proper raincoats and hats and water, yep. all that stuff. Exactly. So, uh, Rich, you say you've been doing this a while. You remember your uh, first show as a spotlight operator? Oh, probably when I was about 15 or 16 years old at Upper Arlington High School operating a strong carbon arc trooper follow spot. What's a carbon uh, arc? It's a type of follow spot that uses two rods of, of hard molded uh, black fiber material covered with a copper jacket on the outside generally in here. It's a, a really old time light source. Very produces a very white blue light in here. Uh, and you have to have a mechanical drive on the mechanism that moves the carbons together at the exact speed so that they burn properly. Did you have to change the rods during the show? Uh, sometimes in year uh, it's required. Most of the rods will work an hour, sometimes a little bit more in there. You have to be able to do it quickly in there at a, in a spot that the stage manager gives you to will tell you when you can shut down and re, and re uh, carbon. Tell us a little bit more about the ice shows where you have up to 10 to 12 lights instead of just one or two. The ice shows, ice shows are the fun shows to do. I love ice shows because it's nonstop action. You're up and down that ice and you're swinging that light backwards and forwards from one side to the other and there's never a dull moment in it. They're a very exciting show to do and but it requires good eyesight and if you, if you start watching the show in any way, shape, or form, they'll skate right out of your light and make you look stupid. What's happening on the headphones during an ice show? They're talking to you, telling you uh, what's going on in here, what your, maybe what your next pickup is. Typical ice show is, I think we were using about eight lights, as I remember right. We haven't done one in quite a few years now. But they are numbered, and they are one through eight. And they will tell you lights two and four, color two, such and such and such, you know, lights one and six, you know, whatever combination they want you in. And they'll tell you, and they'll tell you where on the ice they want you to pick up. You just listen to the stage manager. And most of the ice shows do not use a two-way intercom. It's a set of headphones. They'll tell you once, and they'll come back, and they'll tell you again, generally twice. And you're what, to, where to be, what color to be in. It's your responsibility to be there and to open your light when they tell you to. You remember working a show at St. John Arena, an Elton John show? Uh, yes. Where the uh, balcony started to shake? Yes. I remember that. The cute caller thought we were trying to uh, mess up his show because our lights were bouncing all over the place. Yeah. The whole balcony structure was actually moving up and down in here because the guy, kids were jumping on the bout in, in there. Uh, well, yeah, for our listeners, uh, that's, the lights were sitting along the uh, edge of the, of the balcony, uh, yeah. way up high, the, the high balcony. And uh, we had, I think, 10 or 12 lights up there. Yeah. And it started to shake like, uh, like mad as uh, Elton John repeated the last uh, bars of a particular song over and over again. Yeah. yeah. Scary. It was. <laughs> When you can feel that concrete floor you're standing on, it's actually moving up and down. <laughs> yeah, that show is an exception.